Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead on Forest Time today. Guys, we're not outside on the swing, and there's a reason. The wind is blowing like 25 miles an hour, and it is below freezing. So, Danny ain't sitting out on no porch in below freezing temperatures with a wind chill down towards the teens. I just ain't gonna do it. Not worth it. Okay, so we're in the cabin now. We just, just got here. Got us a little fire going here. Um... Trying to keep the cabin warm, we checked the uh, temperature, it was 63 degrees in here, which is comfortable. That's about what our house stays, is about 63 to 68, somewhere in that area. So it's a nice, comfortable temperature. But um, guys, on Forest Time today is going to be different. We're always talking about controversial stuff and things like that, and what's going on in Virginia, or whatever's going on with the Grand Solar Minimum, these types of things. I want to go in a little bit different twist today. We always talk about being able to survive the Grand Solar Minimum. We talk about on Deep South Homestead, you know, what kind of lifestyle changes we need to make and all this kind of stuff. People are asking me tons of questions uh, about what to do. So today on Porch Time, I'm going to talk about some plants that have stood the test of time. These plants are plants that have survived over the years and they have proven to mankind that they're very, uh, very hardy, they have a long lifespan, and that they're actually worth the effort. Now, you have to understand that any of these plants that have stood the test of time Usually, you don't get a harvest right away. They usually require waiting. Now, a couple of them will give you an immediate harvest, but your harvests are a lot better if you wait a couple of three years before you harvest them. Now, now you don't have to, but some of them is going to be mandatory. The first one is going to be ginger. Ginger is one of those forever plants. You plant the stuff in the ground, it's a rhizome, it grows underground, and it just it will continue to grow, and you can dig up parts of it and break it off and actually use it. Now, ginger is one of the better things to have around the homestead because if you have stomach issues or something of this nature, uh, ginger is very calming to the stomach. It's very soothing to the stomach. It's just one of those plants that all of our forefathers usually had stuck around the homestead somewhere. It is well worth the effort. You can plant it the first year, and you can harvest it the first year, but it's better if you let it stay a couple of years. Now, if you live in a climate where the ground freezes, you know, three and four foot deep in the ground, then you're not going to be able to leave it there permanently. You're going to have to put it in pots and grow it and bring it inside. So you have to work with your climate. Now in the south where I live, we can leave it in the ground permanently. We don't ever have to dig it up if we don't want to. As a matter of fact, I've got some ginger plots out there, um, some Hawaiian ginger and different ones that are probably five feet in diameter and continuing to grow. So we don't have to take all of ours up. So just keep that in mind whenever you're planting your ginger. Now. Another one would be turmeric, or turmeric, however you want to say it. This is another plant that's just like the ginger is grown from a rhizome underground, has many medicinal values. There's all of these things out there from being able to help treat some types of cancers and to cure some types of things, to just, be, <clears throat> to just being an all-around good herb to have on the homestead. Do your research. There's tons of medicinal values to uh, turmeric. And plus, like I said, let it grow for a couple of years, especially if you put it in a pot or put it in the ground, your harvest on that will be a lot better. Now, do yourself a favor, and when you go to the grocery store, guys, they have this stuff, organic turmeric, organic ginger, and all this stuff. Most of that stuff, look at the country of origin, because a lot of that stuff is coming out of China, and their concept of organic is nothing more than human waste. 
And to be able to bring something from one country to another country, there's laws at the shipping ports that says some of this stuff has to be sprayed with chemicals. So just because it says it's organic, don't buy into that. Check the origin of the country in which it comes from before you actually purchase it. Now, another one would be asparagus. Asparagus, I've seen and read some places asparagus has lasted up to 30 and 40 years and still the bed is very productive so asparagus is one of those kinds of crops that has to be planted a specific way in order for it to produce like it needs to you need a ditch in the ground about 10 to 12 inches deep with a little ridge built up in the bottom of it your crowns put down in there now the crowns is where you're going to have to be careful about what kind of a harvest that you get and how long of a period of time you wait. If you buy one-year-old crowns, you probably have to wait three years before you get a decent harvest. And don't get excited when you first see it coming up and start breaking the little shoots off because you've got to let it grow one to two years without breaking any shoots off in order to get the growth into the root system in the ground in order to be able to grow asparagus it's the size of your finger. Because if you start breaking them all too early, you end up with these little tiny spears sticking up that don't get very big at all, and you just really have damaged your asparagus. So let it go and let, let it, you know, get let it spread because it will spread. Now there are several different kinds of asparaguses. There is the types of asparagus that will um, it has berries on it that will actually continue to grow and some people call it evasive because they'll take a place over. Uh, we have some of those on our property here. I don't mind them. Uh, to me, having asparagus growing everywhere is really not a bad thing. But then there are some hybrid asparaguses out there like the Jersey Giants and different ones. Uh, we have those also. They make a really big spear on them. And they don't seem to want to get out of control. If you got a small area you want to just try to make sure that it stays in, then you might want to plant one of the hybrids in that area. But guys, they're kind of like a bamboo. They just keep popping up, keep popping up all over the place. And they are very nutritious. Uh, they're good for your kidneys. Uh, now they do give off a sulfur compound to some people, and I'm one of them, that when you go to the restroom and you urinate, it gives off a very strong odor, which is a sulfur scent, that actually comes from a compound that's inside the asparagus. So don't let that scare you or anything like that. Um, they are very good and very healthy plants to have around the homestead. Now, one of the other things that you might want to consider is some of your trees that you want to plant that's a forever plant, like blueberries. Uh, blueberries can last up to 50 to 75 years, or, or they can last an entire lifespan of a human. Uh, my mom and dad and them have some now that's going on 30 years as being in the ground, and those things produce so many berries, it's astronomical as to the amount of berries that these trees can produce. And the blueberry tree has many health benefits to it also. It's a one-time deal. You plant it, and it takes a little pruning. Uh, you don't ever want over six canes coming up out of the ground on it. If it starts to get more than that, you want to try to start taking the three or four year older ones out and letting the younger ones uh, come on behind it. Guys, just the blueberry. There's many different varieties. In the south, we have a completely different variety of blueberry than they have in the north. So make sure when you choose a plant to plant around your homestead, you get one that's acclimated to your climate. They have high bush varieties. They've got low bush varieties. They've got rabbit eye. There's all different kinds. Just make sure you get the right one for your climate. Another one that I've seen uh, is the apple tree. A lot of people talk about, well, I don't know if apples last that long. Look, there's some apple trees that were here when our forefathers came to this country. The original apple trees, some of them still around the old Thomas Jefferson places and things, them apple trees are still growing. Uh, I used to take hunting trips up north. I could go up into the mountains up in Connecticut and the edge of Massachusetts there. And guys, I'd climb up one of those mountains and find an old plateau up on top where there was an old homestead back from, 
I call them pilgrim days. They were way back yonder. There's still apple trees growing in those woods everywhere with apples all over them. So an apple tree is a very good forever plant that has stood the test of time to plant on your homestead. We stop and we think about you know, other, there's lots of other fruit trees. There's pear trees. Pear trees are another good one you can plant. They've stood the test of time. But guys, we also have to think about, there's some things like herbs that we might want to plant. Mint. Now, mint is one of those things that can last forever. If you plant it, it just keeps growing. But the thing about it is, it spreads. Lots of people put it in their walkways. If they have like a stone walkway or something with dirt in between them, they'll put mint or vetch one of these two in between it there and as you walk on it it gives off a fragrant smell as you crush the leaves when you walk some people put it in beds it's got borders on it so that they can contain it and they make teas out of it and stuff like this that is very very good for teas and drinks and stuff like that uh another one would be rosemary rosemary is one of those plants i mean it takes a little pruning after a while but we have some rosemary plants that gosh i've had here for I don't know, probably 15 years, I reckon. Um, and they're still just a, just a Cadillac. And, you know, you got to do some pruning on them ever so often. But that's not that's not a bad thing. But rosemary is one of those things that we use a lot of in, like, chicken. When we're roasting a chicken or something like that, rosemary just gives it that really good taste. It's really good for any types of fowl or anything like that. Um... It's just very beneficial in that area to, to spice up your food with. Another one, and I've had these for many years, and that is multiplying onions. Now, the old variety of multiplying onions. Them things, you can plant them around your fruit trees, or uh, you can plant them just in beds out in the yard or something like that. Now, don't plant them right up under your fruit tree. Get out away from the fruit tree about four or five feet, and you can plant some, and it's okay. But these multiplying onions, they continually multiply, and then you can go out and pull them up, break them off, and you're constantly getting more and more and more onions. Now, I don't want my fire to go out on me here, but, uh, but not only multiplying onions, you can do garlic or garlic chives, either one. Lots of people think you have to dig garlic up. You don't have to dig it up. It will continue to produce year after year. I've got a, a garlic bed in my front of my house up there that we just go in every so often and just get a few garlics out of it to sell and to eat and to store. And guys, that stuff's been there for years and years. I never replant it. It just keeps coming back. Uh, it's an elephant garlic. It has a corm that, come, that forms on it, and these corms break off in the soil as we harvest it. And this stuff just keeps producing year after year after year. Uh, another thing that we have growing here that we only planted once was lemongrass. Lemongrass is one of those things that it makes a beautiful ornamental grass in the yard, but it also has many cooking benefits. It has many uh, health benefits to it. It's one of those things that really, if you live in subdivisions and something, you got HOA issues about not being able to grow certain things. Things like I talked about, like the mint, the turmeric, the, the ginger, the rosemary, all these types of things like this. Guys, that stuff, the lemongrass, it looks like something that would naturally fit in a landscape, in a yard. And it is actually pretty to look at. Now, it's one of those things that uh, is just good to have in a grid down situation or if a total collapse happens and you can't get back to a store or something like this all the things i've talked about today now this is not all of them i'm just giving you some things and some ideas to think about today these are things if you're starting a homestead or if you're a little worried about what's fixing to happen in this country and you're like Danny, what can i do to start making some prep uh, preparations i live in town i don't you know i live in a subdivision uh, I don't have much space. All I got is a small backyard. Guys, you can do permaculture. You can go in and you can put thornless blackberries underneath them. That's another one. Plant the thornless blackberries in there. Those things will continually grow from now on. 
and you can create a permaculture forest in a small backyard and if someone comes in and takes what foods you have when they look at that landscape they're not thinking about that being food they're looking at something in a can or jar or fresh laid out on a counter or something like that that's what they're looking for they very seldom do they ever pay attention to a landscape and if you have a landscape that has these plants in it then there's a good chance that you'll always have something to put in your belly designing and building a homestead that's what I'm in the off-grid cabin today that's what we're doing over here Wanda went around planting onions around certain trees and we've got huckleberries that's nature's plant it comes up they come up and they just last for years and years and years you know what I mean they uh, they, we harvest the berries off of them. We're putting blueberries over here in different places. We're putting fruit trees in different places. The lemongrasses, we'll be putting the turmeric, uh, the ginger, all the things I've talked about. We have asparagus growing out here. We've got all kinds of different shallots, garlics. All these things are growing over here at the cabin to create a permaculture homestead. And guys, that's what it's all about. If they come for our food one day, we need to have a forest around us that we can go out into and forage to supplement what little food that we will have. So guys, today on Forest Time has been a little bit different. Uh, lots of people want to know about survival and wants to know about what can I plant. Uh, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a big area to grow a lot of stuff, but yet I want to survive. I can't move. I can't do this or, you know, it's just, it can be done. We just have to keep a mindset that we're thinking in the right direction. And we're not just giving up and sticking our head in the sand like an ostrich. We're actually working towards having an edible landscape. Now, you can put things in there like strawberries. We've got, I've had some, I've got strawberries that I've had for going on 27 years now. The same plants and they just sit on the ground and they just run out and multiply run out and multiply and they bear strawberries all summer long the winter doesn't seem to hurt them you know if you live in the right climate you can do these things so guys i gotta put some wood in the fire here before it gets down too low and i gotta get back to work i thought i'd come in here today and shoot this little quick porch time it's not long it's not philosophical but it's got a lot of good information in it if you're designing and building a homestead or if you're trying to do a little bit of permaculture around your regular house, if you have an HOA or whatever, there's lots of things you can add in uh, that looks just like a beautiful flower bed. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.